guys, you'll be surprised to see that uh, these stripes in my lawn are a result of this robotic lawnmower. It is from Anthbot. It uses GPS to create those lines, no boundary wires or anything. So I'm going to show you how this works. And check it out, I've got it running off solar power as well. So the uh, sun is the thing that's uh, powering my lawnmower. Let's unbox this robotic mower. Got a nice quick start guide, got some more documentation. Got uh, some long poles uh, with a wire inside. There's the mower itself. I'm going to need two hands for this. I've got uh, what appears to be an antenna. I've got a long cord here. Suspiciously looks like a power cord. I've got the uh, power brick here. And then these are some little uh, plastic ground stakes. There's uh, some hardware, a little screwdriver, a little Allen wrench, and some ground screws in this bag. And I've got a big uh, spiky metal uh, object in this bag. We've got the docking station. Up here at the top, uh, we've got a few buttons, a little display it looks like, and uh, a stop button. On the side here, we've got this big wheel and it appears to be a sensor slash camera. On the front, it looks like we have big contacts for the docking station. And then we've got a whole slew of sensors that appears out here in the front. This other side is very similar to the other one. And there's nothing on the back besides a sticker. We've got some very heavy duty rubberized swivel wheels here in the front. They just move freely. And then this is the blade right here. And I guess it's a wheel that spins. And then there are these little free floating razor blades that are the actual blades. Okay, I'm gonna install this uh, docking station here, I think. Uh, it's right here on the edge of the lawn. Uh, I don't want it on the lawn. They send these little uh, earth screws to uh, secure the uh, base station with, so we're gonna install those quick. Bring you guys into the shade here for a minute while I assemble this uh, pole. A little hard to see with the angle of the sun, but uh, we've got this here, and I'm gonna just uh, stick it down right there. It's not all the way in. Let's do that quick. And once again, there's only one plug that that will go into. And then we've simply gotta connect the power here. Simple as that. We've got a flashing green light, so I'm too close to the house. It needs to be solid green. So let's find a new location for this. Whew, we did it. Finding a uh, location for this antenna that works is tricky. You can see we finally got a solid green light. The trick is this needs to be in a clear enough location, but still needs to be within Wi-Fi range of your house. So anyway, it uh, is a little tricky. I don't have any power out here, so I'm running it off this power station. Maybe I can build a little solar uh, setup or something out here that uh, will uh, power this. Alright, we're supposed to enter a pin. The default is three zeros. And then once you have all four zeros, click the OK button th four times. One, two, three, four. Okay. The other thing we're looking for is this green GPS icon here, which uh, means that it's uh, talking to the antenna OK. So now let's download the app. Okay, here's the app. Let's go ahead and add a device. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on and that we're near the device. We're pretty close to the device. So let's go ahead and hit OK. We're searching for Bluetooth. And it found it. And call this robot mower. All right, now I gotta connect to the Wi-Fi. Only uses 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, now it's going through the uh, setup process and we have success. So let's go ahead and enter the device. Looks like there's a firmware upgrade, so let's go ahead and upgrade that. Let's uh, create a map now. We've already configured the antenna correctly. We have a green light and it wants us to map the yard and it says to not do it uh, at night or on rainy days. So let's be sure and mow the lawn so it's not crazy long. You can see that uh, I have mowed mine. I mowed mine just uh, about a day and a half ago. And it says to remove your obstructions if you have any. Confirm a solid green and the GPS light, which we did. And confirm and confirm. Please start remote control of the robot to begin creating map boundary. So it wants us to control it. One cool thing here, uh, we have an auto button and it will map it itself. I'm going to try that. Worst case scenario, I do it manually. All right, pressing the auto button. Here we go. Please make sure there are clear boundaries and follow the machine. So my, my lawn has some pretty defined uh, boundaries, so it should be fairly easy, hopefully. Anyway, we'll see. Confirm. And it fell off the edge. Let's see if it can get itself up. Did it. it keep falling off the edge. See if it can get itself unstuck again. Yeah, look at that. All right, I think it's a little confused. Let's uh, let's go to manual mapping. Right, I'm going to do a manual boundary map. I'll show you guys here uh, a section of me doing that. Okay, we finished the perimeter, but uh, there's this uh, tree here in the middle of the lawn. And if we get in here with the shade, you'll be able to see that there's a large amount of dirt around it. So I got to create a no-go zone for around this. You can see my map here and uh, I'm on the create no-go zone. So let's drive the mower over here and uh, create this. All right, with the mower here, I'm just going to tap this create no-go zone. And I'm just going to carefully drive it around this tree. You might be able to see both things happening at once here. OK, 
Okay, so it's not finished yet, so I guess we'll keep going. There we go. So then we'll go ahead and say complete. Now we'll go ahead and uh, tell it to recharge. Let's uh, watch it go. Look at that. <laughs> Starting to charge. Did it. A little proof of concept here. We got the mower uh, charging here, and I've got uh, this 200 watt uh, solar panel, and uh, it's coming over here and in the shade. And I'm gonna put this actually in this little shed so that it can just uh, work for me. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but that uh, panel is uh, dumping in 176 watts. The screen's a little messed up on the camera, but anyway. 176 watts in. This will let me uh, mow my lawn with the power of the sun. This right here is where you can create no mow zones, which is what we just finished. And then here you can edit the general map, which is awesome, or expand it. We're able to control the mower down here at the bottom. We can do the full map. We can do zones, so we can create a specific zone on the map. We can do a spot mow, and we can do an edge mow. Tapping the top right corner here, we've got uh, an option to set a schedule, which is kind of cool. Uh, we can set up a do not disturb time. We can enable um, it to detect when it starts raining. We can adjust uh, the voice that uh, talks from the mower. I'm going to keep it uh, on it 100%. We can uh, trigger check for firmware updates here. That's very cool. You can manually mow. We can reset the pin code, which uh, we'll do. You can restore the factory defaults change its name. Now that's cool. It keeps track of how much it's mowed. And then we have access to the user manual here, which uh, is pretty sweet. Very, very convenient. This gear icon is pretty cool. So you can adjust if it mows once or twice over the lawn. Here is where you can adjust your uh, cutting height. It's in millimeters. And then this is pretty cool. You can adjust the direction of the lawn mower. I'm going to keep it zero degrees uh, for now. Uh, there's this edge cutting feature. I'm going to see what that does. So let's save that. And that's basically the, uh, the app in a nutshell. All right, I've uh, triggered a, a full mow and uh, it's off to the races. The drive wheels are a lot louder than, say, the uh, blade underneath. I need to adjust the angle that it's cutting because right now it's kind of doing a, a funny diagonal uh, direction. And we're cutting at a 60 millimeter height. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, it is it is mowing. <laughs> yeah, you can see the, the tracks and uh, swaths that it's taken. I love that it goes up and down in a uniform pattern. That just makes it. It'll be interesting to see, we've got those leaves right there. Is that uh, something that's just going to mow over the top of? Or is it going to trigger obstacle avoidance? Let's watch what happens. Nope, oh, gonna go right over it. Mulched it up a little bit. It's found an issue. It's going to avoid these irrigation control boxes because it thinks that it's an obstacle because it ended on this swipe. You can kind of see that. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see if it can work its way out from these obstacles. Battery. Returning to charge. Oh, and it's run out of battery. If you guys are a lawn snob like I am, what it's doing right now is kind of a catastrophe. I know it's taking the shortest path to its charging station that's uh, over here, but it just drove across all those nice lines and messed them up. So that's sad. It'd be sweet to, if they could come up uh, with the uh, lawn snob mode, make it so that it would go back to its charging station via the edge instead of just cutting directly across all of its nice lines. All right, we have officially resumed here and uh, it charged up to 80% and then started running again. Let's see if it can figure out how to get past the obstacles here. It's mowing in somewhat of a strange pattern at this point. I wonder if it's got a weak connection at the moment to the base station. I'm gonna pause uh, the video here and jump in. Me from the future, as you saw, the mower was having a hard time realizing that it was okay to go over these irrigation control boxes. Well, since that part of the video was filmed, uh, we've got a new firmware update, and we have this feature called Vision Inspection, and notice it's set to medium. We can come in here and we can disable this, or we can change its sensitivity. Worst case scenario, I have to disable it. I'm gonna just test it on low first, and uh, see if that corrects the issue with it not mowing over these irrigation control boxes. All right, here it comes. Let's see. Uh, went up on it, but uh, still turned around. I think it still maybe got bothered by it. Ah, managed. All right, we're coming back now. Let's see. Ah, look at that. Perfection. So they really improved upon that in that latest firmware update. So it will now be able to differentiate obstacles like this, and I didn't even need to turn it completely off. Here it comes again. Right over it. And one more time. Beautiful. I love seeing companies that uh, take feedback and uh, insights from their customers and uh, applies it quickly to their product to improve and make it better. All right, let's see if it can start uh, where it left off. This was its first pass right over here. Yep, it started right on. So you can see that was its first pass right there. So it kind of started in the middle though. It technically needs to come all the way down. So we'll see if it uh, is able to sort that out. Yep, it is. There we go. Okay, now it's going to come up and uh, 
get back on track now. That's fantastic to see. All right, I'm gonna put you guys here on time lapse and we'll watch it run. It uh, came over to this point now. You can see it's last pass and it ran out of battery and I went back to recharge. That's the second time now and maybe we're halfway done. So it got uh, all of that area, the side yard, and uh, now it's got the rest of this main area and this big area. So I'm guessing this uh, 600 model, so this is the lowest battery capacity model out there, is going to need to charge at least four times to mow this entire backyard. And this is just my backyard. We haven't even touched the front yard yet. I probably won't uh, have it do that uh, just because of how long it's taking. Well, we'll see how it goes. Okay, coming up to the no-go zone. Let's see if it works. Yeah, doing very good. Guys, the lawn looks pretty legit. That's my only gripe as a lawn snob. The lines are so nice, and then you get these weird interruptions as it goes to and from its charging dock. So Anthbot, uh, give us a firmware update uh, that will not do that. And, uh, you know, follow an edge and then uh, resume uh, so that it doesn't interrupt these nice lines. Because look how nice it looks. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, the little triangle right there has yet to be mowed. But uh, as you saw, it mowed all the way around this uh, no-go zone. And then uh, you, you won't be able to see because of the sun. There's this little corner right here that uh, still needs to be mowed as well as up over there. So at least one more full charge and probably a piece of another. Those lines are looking good. Very, very good. Okay, so it finished uh, almost this whole thing with the exception of just a teeny piece right uh, here in the corner right there. I haven't seen it do super good edge mowing either yet. Uh, it still says that it's got more to do, so I assume on this next uh, battery charge we're going to see it uh, complete everything. All right, back to work. Bummer, it ran out so close to the end. But we'll see when this finishes, this last little piece, if it does anything extra on the edges or not. I did ask it to do the edge cut, so we'll see. Okay, it does seem to be taking a pass around the edge here. <laughs> Well, it took uh, the better part of a day, but uh, it has finished. All right, I've started it again. Let's uh, check obstacle avoidant. I'm gonna come stand in front of it, my exposed feet. Oh, look at that, totally missed me. Let's see what happens when it comes back. Missed me again. Let's see if it passes me or goes around me or if it turns around again. Yep, one passed me this time. Let's see if it's gonna keep going or if it's gonna yeah, it's gonna come around and do behind me now. All right, I got a pipe here. We're gonna throw it for a loop. Let's put that down and see if it avoids it. All right, here it comes, let's see. Is it too low? No, look at that. Nice, we did it. All right, let's do something trickier. Okay, I got two small items. I've got a little trowel right there. And you can see it's basically flush with the top of the grass, but the common garden tool that could be left out. And then the uh, tricky one, I've got a pair of clear safety glasses here. So let's see what happens with those. Here it comes, the trowel. Ah, uh, nope. <laughs> Went right over it. Thankfully, it was low enough that it didn't hit the blades or anything. Okay, it's probably gonna drive over that trowel again. Ah, oh, it got stuck. Okay, let's see about these safety glasses. Nope. Ah, it felt him. Mangling him. No, he did get in the blades, but it, it did not see him. Okay, let's try, let's try putting them up, if I can make him stay. Put them up a little higher, see if it notices him this time. Yep, that time it noticed it. So there's a fine line for obstacle avoidance. You know, you don't want to be avoiding leaves or something on the ground, right? But uh, it is avoiding things that uh, it can see that are, you know, slightly up above the grass level. It just drove right over that trowel. So anything with a low profile in the grass, there's a chance that it will go right over the top of it. Anything that's sticking up, even if it's somewhat transparent, like these uh, safety glasses, it will avoid them. Now let's just make sure that the big uh, stop button works. Pin. And when you push that, you've got to put in the, the pin again to get it going. Safety glasses have been blown over now. Let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it didn't see it. Bumped into it and uh, it felt the resistance, so it went a different way, but it did not see him that uh, that close to the ground. So what do I think of the Anthbot Genie 600, guys? Well, 
Let me say this, I think it does a fantastic job in terms of its pattern, the quality of cut, as well as not having any boundary wires. That is just so nice. I like its edge mow feature. It obviously can't get super close to the edges. So you're going to need to have at least a line trimmer handy. And I think you're gonna to need to keep a real mower handy in case for some reason this gets behind and uh, you need to knock down tall grass. Mapping is super, super easy. Its obstacle avoidance I think is, is great. And it just made my lawn look really beautiful. So I think they've done a fantastic job with the mower itself. Now, I know one of my pros is that it doesn't require a boundary wire, but that is one of my cons as well. This thing was very persnickety and uh, really needed to be way out in the open. And that really restricted my options to where I could put the charging station. I noticed on their website, they sell an extension cable for this. That could help tremendously so that uh, I could put the charging station somewhere and this doesn't necessarily have to be right next to it and I could put that a little more remote. But it was a little more of a headache uh, to get a good spot that met all the criteria that had an open view of the sky, that had Wi-Fi reception from my house still, and that had power. I couldn't achieve all three of those. So that's why I'm going with the good old solar powered solution out here. I'm gonna leave some links for this lawnmower down in the description below. That way you can uh, check it out uh, further. If I were you, I would highly recommend getting one of the models that has a slightly bigger battery, unless you have just the absolute tiniest lawn. Because this 600 really struggled with my back lawn. I live on a quarter acre lot, but you know, the house is occupying some of that. Um, you know, the front has a lot of uh, hard infrastructure. I've got my garden over there. I've got uh, my patio. So there's substantially less than a quarter acre of lawn here. And this thing had to charge multiple times. So I would definitely just bite the bullet and get one of the larger battery capacity units. In terms of cost, if you just kind of think about it for a minute, this unit uh, will save you time, so you don't have to do it. It will allow you to only need to come out and trim periodically, so you could probably avoid hiring a lawn crew to come and uh, mow, saving you money. And then it's basically zero maintenance. You gotta replace the blades periodically, but they're pretty cheap. No gas, no oil, no spark plugs, no air filters. So it could be somewhat of a wise uh, investment in terms of overall you know, lifetime costs, right? I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. So please sound off in the comments. You can't tell this video took an entire day to film and then some, plus not to mention all the post-production editing and things like that. So if, uh, if these real world tests are of value to you, please do four things for me. Like the video, subscribe, comment, and share. Four 100% free things for you to do, but uh, they really benefit the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I try to read and respond to all of your comments and I can't wait to hear from you. Thanks for joining me on this video. Stay safe and we'll catch y'all next time.